children on their knees Oh, praise Him in the noonday For gentle birds that sing Oh, oh, praise Him, O oh, ye people Praise the King Praise Him for the peaceful porch in rocking chairs that sway and praise him for the rolling hills where children laugh and play oh and praise him for the wandering souls that never lost their way oh oh praise him all ye people praise the king
your people sing. We will rise with you, lifted on your wings, and the world will sing that. Yes, the world will sing that. Our God saves. Our God saves. There is Baptist Church this morning, I would like to share something with you that the Lord pressed upon my heart this morning, that this morning is Father's Day, and you need to know your Heavenly Father loves you this morning, amen? amen. I want to share that with you this morning as we uh, get ready to jump into the scripture this morning. I would tell you it's an honor and privilege to be here again this morning. We was here last week, and I shared with the 830 service this morning, Westfield Baptist Church, you have made me and my family welcome. And we want to thank you and praise you for that. That's a testimony for your church that we're strangers and you've made us feel welcome. So we want to thank you again for giving us the opportunity to be here. But I would ask you this morning, if you have your Bibles with you, I ask you to open up to the book of Psalms. We'll be reading from Psalms 128 this morning. This is a very, very dear piece of scripture that the Lord laid upon my heart as I was reading and studying God's word. And he gave this to me, and one of the things you'll see is you'll see from our title up here this morning that it is a psalm for God's divine design for the home. God's divine design for the home. I would ask you this morning, if you found your place here in Psalms 128, I would ask you to stand this morning in honor to the reading and the reverence of God's holy, infallible word this morning. I'll be reading all six verses of Psalms 128. And the Bible says, Blessed is everyone that feareth the Lord, that walketh in his ways. For thou shalt eat the labor of thine hands. Happy shalt thou be, and it shall be well with thee. Thy wife shall be as a fruitful vine by the sides of thine house. Thy children like olive plants round about the table. Behold, that thus shall the man be blessed that feareth the Lord. The Lord shall be blessed thee out of Zion, and thou shalt see the good of Jerusalem all the days of thy life. In verse number 6, the Bible says, Ye thou shalt see thy children's children in peace upon Israel. Let us pray. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, God, we just want to thank you so much for being here this morning. God, we want to thank you for the wonderful singing, the praise that's been offered up this morning. Now, God, we just ask you to bless the reading of your holy word. God, I pray right now, Lord, as it touches lives, Lord, I pray you prepare our hearts, God, to just to receive the message that you've given this morning. And God, I pray, Lord, as we leave, God, we know that, Lord, you have a divine design for the home. God, that we have Christian homes here at Westfield Baptist Church. And God, most importantly, I ask, Lord, if there's one here this morning that's not saved, God, I pray right now, Lord, you prepare their heart. God, I pray, Lord, you prepare that, that Christian this morning that needs to hear this message, Lord. God, we love you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. One of the things I couldn't help but think about as I was preparing for this Father's Day's message, I couldn't help but as you go throughout the Bible, there's so many different passages, there's so many great men that have been godly fathers all throughout the scriptures. As I was reading and studying, I couldn't help but focusing on this one particular psalm. The psalmist wrote this particular psalm for God's family this morning, church. What God has revealed for us. Church, I want to share with you this morning, if you're a father this morning, we are celebrating Father's Day Fathers, dads, all around the building, I challenge you this morning that you have a fearful assignment laid before you. 
to be the godly leader, the godly provider of your home this morning. Amen? I want you to think about this morning because if you have children, if you have a family, God has blessed you. And I want you to think about something. Outside the doors of this church lays a dangerous minefield. A dangerous minefield that you try to struggle and challenge where you try to protect your children, you try to protect your home from all the different things that's out there. As we look around, we see the landscape. It's littered and wrecked with families all around where they've been destroyed. These families have been destroyed by financial pressures, devastation, shattered immorality, and devastated by the drugs and alcohol that plague the world in which we live in this morning. Amen. Church, think about that. There's a minefield outside the doors of this church. And men, this morning, if you're a father, you have been called to protect your family this morning from all the dangers that lie outside these doors. As we study and look at God's Word, I couldn't help but think about what used to be wrong is now considered right. Amen. Makes no sense. What's right is wrong. Church, it's the world we live in. It's perverse. It's so twisted anymore. Isaiah chapter 5, verse number 20. The Bible says, Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil. Is that not the world in which we're living in today? Everybody, you look around. Church, I, I could sit up here all day and give you example after example. All the problems that are plaguing this world today. And we stop and we look around. And it's not like it was five years ago. It wasn't like it was ten years ago. Everything is so twisted and out of whack. But don't you think about that this morning, church. Think about this very carefully. Dads, fathers, you would love to surround your children. You'd love to surround your home with your arms with all the protection that God could possibly give you and shield from any harm coming to your family. From anything from the outside world coming in. But at the end of the day, we have to stop and ask ourselves, America, America will not change, church, whatsoever until we change our homes. Amen? Think about that. The country in which we live in, it's not going to change until we take a stand and say we're going to change our homes. Dads, I challenge you this morning. I challenge you. Change your home today. Don't wait. Do it today. Change your home today and say I'm going to have a godly home. We're going to look this morning at the godly divine design of what God intended for our Christian homes to be this morning as we look at this psalmist. Psalms 128 was written for dads to identify God's perfect plan to have a godly home, church. Amen. Ain't that what you want this morning? Do you not want a godly home? Amen. Amen. Maybe a handful. Hey, I want a godly home in my house, church. I love having a godly home. But that responsibility comes on the way to my back. Amen. It's a heavy responsibility, and I don't take it lightly. God give us a perfect example of Adam and Eve. Over in the book of Genesis. Right from the beginning, God gave us an example of what a godly Christian home is supposed to be. When God created Adam, he created Adam in his own image. Y'all know the story? And then he, he took one of his ribs out and he said, you know, I'm going to create him a helpmate. I'm going to give him a woman to come alongside of him, to help him along the way. God's perfect idea of what a home should be. One man, one woman, and then on top of that, he instructed Adam to go out and take care of the garden. Amen. Take care of your family this morning, church. He instructed Adam and Eve right from the get-go to take care of their family. A godly institution that's been ordained in heaven this morning for each and every one of us to say, you know what? I want a godly Christian home this morning. Amen. Amen. I was sharing with some this morning. This psalm was written for me this morning. I thought I have done such a great job, a such grander job in, in trying to have a good godly home. I come to church. My, I got a godly wife about a godly son now, amen? I think I've done so much, but as I read and I study God's Word, and I think there's so much more I can be doing. There's so much more I can be doing to influence my family. And I couldn't help but as we read this psalm, it just lays out perfectly, verse by verse, the divine design that God has intended for our families this morning. Church, one of the first things I want us to look at this morning, dads, is I've challenged you, I've told you the ultimate responsibility comes upon your back this morning. The very first point we look at this morning, the character that you live, the character in your life that you live in daily and daily out, that's what your family sees, that's what your children sees, that's what the world sees. And you say, well, Brad, you know, I, I've heard that before, and I'm at church this morning, I brought my kids to church, and I've done the right thing. Yes, you have. But let's look at verse number 1 and tell you what the psalmist instructs us to do. Verse number 1, the Bible says, Blessed is everyone that feareth the Lord, that walketh in his ways. For thou shalt eat the labor of thy hands. Happy shalt thou be, and it shall be well with thee. 
Church, think about that very first verse for just a moment. Blessed is everyone that feareth the Lord. Amen. We should fear God. And, and oftentimes we, we get, we get our, our, our translations kind of mixed up or our definitions kind of backwards because this is not talking about fear as when we hear of a cringing, oh, I don't want to be close to God. I'm scared of him. Church, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about an awesome reverence, a respect for the God that we serve this morning. Amen. The holy God that serves in heaven this morning that loved you enough that he created the heavens and the earth and he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die on Calvary's cross for you and I. A love that I can't find. A love that I can't even try to express in words. A love that I try to share with my family that I still can't do it justice like God the Father done for us this morning. So you think about that this morning, church. We should fear God. We should have a reverence, a respect for Him that everything that we do is to honor and praise Him out of respect. Amen? Couldn't help but think about Psalms 19, verse number 9. The Bible says, The fear of the Lord is clean and enduring forever. If we were to fear God, that's clean spiritual living. Amen? Amen? Who don't like to have good, clean spiritual living? I do. Amen? It's not that complicated. challenge and say, I'll be the very best dad I can be, because that's what God wants us to be as one of the fathers. He wants us to be our very best. And that's going to happen in our daily lives, how we live each and every day, and how we're walking with the Lord. Y'all look at that second part of that verse. One that feareth the Lord, that walketh in his ways. Follow his commandments. It's that simple. Follow what the Lord wants you to do this morning. Because he's commanded you to upraise your family in a godly home. Amen. Has he not ordered you to do that? Hey, the psalmist wrote it. I didn't write it, amen? If I wrote it, I'd have made a mess out of it. The psalmist said, hey, to fear God and walk with him each and every day. I couldn't help but as I was studying and praying and, and, and spending time in prayer over this sermon, I couldn't help but think when we talk about fearing the Lord and walking with the Lord, have you ever thought about, I'd be afraid if God called me into ministry. Have you ever thought you say, well, no, that's, the Lord's never pressed that upon my heart. But church, I share that with you this morning because that's what the Lord did in my life. He started speaking to me and giving me different things, saying, Brad, you, you're, you're going to preach. I'm going to call you to be a pastor of a church. And I said, oh, Lord, not me. I, I do good to take care of my own life, much less, you know, there's a couple hundred of y'all all together, amen. You know, I think, what a, what a challenging, awesome responsibility to pastor a church. It's scary. And I said, Lord, I, I don't want to do that. But the more I prayed about it, the more I seek God's will, I started thinking about, what if I'm not obedient to God? What if I don't do what He wants me to do? Church, that's scary, sacred ground. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because I started thinking about, what if something happens to my family that He's blessed me with? He's blessed me with a beautiful wife. He's blessed me with a beautiful child. And I thought, what if something happens to them because of my disobedience to God? Amen. That's scary ground this morning, church. So, fathers, this morning we're challenged to fear the Lord and walk with Him so we don't have these type of problems in our lives. Because when we start fearing out of the wrong fear, wrong respect, the wrong reference, that's when we're getting away from God. We're falling off course. We're falling off track this morning. I want to share with you this morning. Look at verse number 2. For thou shalt eat the labor of thine hands. Happy shalt thou be, and it shall be well with thee. Church, I want you to think about that second verse. Our families need to see us working towards a different purpose. Amen. And I'm not talking about, I know, hey, don't misunderstand what I'm saying. We have to work and, and we have to earn pay and we have to provide for our families. But our family needs to see us working for the Lord this morning. Amen. They need to see us have a little bit of a zeal, a little excitement about us that we want to come to church, we want to serve the Lord, and we want to do it with the right frame of mind. Amen. 
Amen. I, hey, church, I like to have a good time. If y'all not figured out anything about me, I'm a happy person. I like to have a good time. And quite frankly, my wife calls me a nut half the time. Amen. <laughs> y'all ask her, she'll tell you. I like to come into God's house and have a good time. I like for my son to see me and my wife having a good time, being happy. Because if they're not seeing that in their lives, why would they want anything we've got? Amen. Y'all think about your youth group. You've got an awesome youth group. These children are watching our lives. It's not all what takes place back here. It's about what they see on your face, how they see you act, how they see you worshiping the Lord. Do you have a smile? Do you have a zeal about you? Because the psalmist says, happy will you be if you're working for the Lord this morning. Amen? That's good times, church. I like to have a good time. And I couldn't help but read and study this. My wife, hey, I don't apologize for this morning, honey. Forgive me for this. I want to share a personal story with you guys about in our own life. Because my son, he mimics everything that dad does. Amen. Y'all know what I'm talking about? He mimics everything, the good and the bad. Praise God, there's plenty of both. Amen. I'm not perfect. But I won't never forget. My little boy was about three years old. And we was at home playing one day, and, and, and Misty, my wife, she wasn't at home. And we started wrestling and playing, and he said, Daddy, we're not supposed to be wrestling. Mommy said not to wrestle. And I leaned over real quietly, and I said, guess what, son? Daddy's the boss of this house. <laughs> Amen. I said, Daddy's the boss of this house. And we wrestled and played, and we had a royal rumble there in the house when Mom wasn't at home. We like to wrestle and play. And about a week went by, and we was at home cleaning the house, and I heard my wife say, Britton, go down in your room and pick up your toys. And he said, Mommy, I don't have to. And I was in the kitchen, and I was like, oh, wait a minute, where's this going? She said, what do you mean you don't have to? He said, you're not the boss of this house. Daddy is the boss of this house. And I went running. I went running down the hallway. Whoa, whoa. son, that's not what I meant. Don't repeat that. He said, but Daddy, you said you was the boss of this house. He shared something with you this morning, church. I feared my life. <laughs> I had a reverence for my life at that point. Some of you laugh and you look around. Some of you dads, I got the look. Hey, man. I got the look. And I said, uh-oh, I messed up. Church, I shared that story with you this morning because it's funny but my son still to this day, every once in a while, he comes slipping out. Mommy, Daddy's the boss of this house. And I just grinned. And I'm like, mm, please don't say that again. But church, our children, they mimic what we do. Amen. Amen. They mimic what we say in every aspect of our life. We can't pick and choose. If it was that simple, if I could pick and choose and say, now, son, this is what you're supposed to do that Daddy does. This is okay. But now when Daddy does this, don't, don't do that. Y'all see what I'm saying? How would that twist the mind of your child? Because that's oftentimes what we do. We, and we don't mean to do it. We do it in our own lives and we don't really mean to do it. But that's oftentimes what happens. So when you think about the character that you're living, you've got to think about how you live in your character each and every day in front of your children. Because dads, that's an awesome responsibility this morning. And I couldn't help but think about not only is it about the character there that he lives, it's about the companion that he loves. Amen. Y'all look at this, this wonderful scripture this morning. Look at verse number three. And the Bible says, Thy wife shall be as a fruitful vine by the sides of thine house. Thy children like olive plants round about the table. A wife shall be a fruitful vine in the sides of thine house. If you start looking at translations and looking at the different things of the Greek and the Hebrew, that, that word by the sides, that means inside in the middle of the home. When you start focusing on the middle of the home, that's where the wife is. A good wife is like a fruitful vine that she will cling to her husband. She will cling to her helpmate because he leadeth her in the godly life, the godly example that he lives each and every day. Amen? Dads, fathers, that's what we should be doing this morning. We should be setting an example not only for our children but for our wives as well. Because if we're leading the godly life that God has divinely designed for us, it will show forth in all aspects of our life. And our wife, our helpmate, she will see it. Like a vine, she brings forth good fruit. The mother is in the home. She's going to be there working. She's trying to keep the home. Mothers, moms, I'll tell you this morning, you have just a big, uh, awesome responsibility, such a big obligation, just as the Father does, because you should be keeping a good, tidy, clean Christian home. Amen? Amen. 
Amen. That's the same thing that you should be doing just like the dad. It's an awesome responsibility because we think about where does our direction come from? It comes from the Heavenly Father. Amen. All of our direction, everything we do in life, it comes from the Heavenly Father. So if we're focusing on Him, our home should be godly homes, right? Amen. That sounds simple enough, does it not? It's pretty simple. I've lost some of you all know. Yeah, I can see your face. That's simple enough, is it not, to live a godly life? And you think, well, Brad, it's not quite that simple. But we've looked at three things this morning already in Psalms 128. The very first thing, I said to fear the Lord, fear God, right? We're to work hard, work for the Lord, and to love your wife. And you think, that sounds so easy, does it not? So why do we have so many broken homes? Why do we have so many problems in the world today? Amen. 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 It's church, it's because we fell short when it comes down to the point of saying, you know what? I'm going to do everything God wants me to do in my life. And it comes down to how much time do we dedicate? How much time do we really dedicate to our homes? Church, because I, I thought, hey, I do a good job. My wife tells me, you're a good dad. You're a good husband. But I often find my time. Dad, I challenge you this morning. I challenge you this morning. Don't let, don't let the world creep into your home. Amen. God has given you a family. He has blessed you richly. Take the time to nourish it, protect it, to make sure that no outside forces interfere with your godly home. Because that's the world in which we live today. I couldn't help but as I looked at Ephesians chapter 5, verse number 25 through 26, the Bible says, Husbands, Love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church. And he gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with a washing of water by the word. Church, if you can even grasp the love that Jesus Christ has for you this morning, is astronomical. Astronomical. And right here in his word, he says to love your wife. Love your family just as Christ loved the church. Amen. Amen. Church, that's something that ought to give you chill bumps this morning. Think about it. I want to have that type of love for my family. I want my family to go through life and say, you know what, we've had the best Christian home. We've had the most godly father. It's been a wonderful experience because that's what God wants for our homes this morning, church. So I challenge you this morning. We're, we're talking about Father's Day. This is an encouraging message for you fathers to say, you know what, it's time. It's time for me to take back my family and go forth and have this divine design that God created for us to have a Christian home. Church, the next thing we see, not only... Is it about the companion he loves? It's about the children he leads. Y'all look at the latter part of that verse number three. It says, Thy children like olive plants round about the table. Round about the table. It don't say olive trees. It says olive plants. Church, this is a symbolization of little small shoots, olive shoots coming up from around the tree. and understanding to say, Brad, you need to spend quality time with him while he's young, while he's wanting to stay at home and hear what you've got to say, amen? Some of you parents will get that, amen? Your children will not always want to sit around the home. Wait till they get those keys. They want to drive and go else places, amen? We have to think about these things because that, that, that table, that dinner table, that can be your altar church. That can be your quality family time to sit around and talk about what's going on in your child's life. 
So as I look and I think about the children that he leads, that's so important. It's so important about the children that he leads, church, because we're leaving a legacy. Amen? We're leaving a legacy in everything that we do because these children, they need our time, they need patience, they need training. They need a development where you're actually spending that quality time and they can say, you know what? Reading God's Word is not so bad because it's spending time with mom and dad. Amen? And oftentimes in our homes, and I'm not talking, hey, if I sit down and told my son that we're going to read all of all the Psalms, what do y'all think is going to happen? <laughs> He's going to doze off and say, Dad, you're killing me. Can't we do something else? Church, I'm not talking about trying to shove this down your family's throat. That's not what I'm talking about. If I told you this morning that I love you, you'd say, well, that sounds good. That sounds very nice. If I tell you that I've been praying for you each and every day, and I spent every night praying for you, and I'm here Sunday morning, every Sunday morning, and I'm here every Wednesday night, I've devoted time to Westfield Baptist Church, amen? And you can say that, God loves us. And he's demonstrated, he showed us that he loves us. That's what our children are looking for this morning, church, for you to devote your time, spend some quality time with them, and demonstrate how much you love them, and it comes from spending time with them, amen? It's not in buying them something. It's not in providing the roof over their head. It's not in buying them something to eat. They don't get me wrong. Those things are nice, amen. I like having a roof over my head. I like having food to eat. But my son would rather spend quality time with me than anything else in this world. That's all he ever asked for me. That's all he ever asked. He wants to spend time with me. So church, we've got to really focus. Where is our time? Where is our time really being spent in the home? I want to share something with you this morning. Staggering, staggering number. In the average Christian home, you notice I said the average Christian home, in the United States of America, right now, 2017, the average time that a father spends with his children, average quality time, is seven and a half minutes a day. Think about that for just a moment. Seven and a half minutes a day. The church, I'm not talking about that you're at home and your kids are running around, they're playing and they're in and out. I'm talking about quality time. There's 24 hours in a day. You do the math. Seven and a half minutes is not quality time, amen? That's where the church is hurting this morning. That's where we're, homes are falling apart because we're not spending that quality time with our children. Church, I challenge you this morning. Dads, fathers, I encourage you to spend that quality time with your kids because we're fixing to see it will pay off. I promise you, it will pay off. Y'all look at verses 4, 5, and 6. It says, Behold, that thus shall the man be blessed that feareth the Lord. The Lord shall bless thee out of Zion, and thou shalt see the good of Jerusalem all the days of thy life. And yea, thou shalt see thy children's children in peace upon Israel. I tell you what's so amazing about this. What's so amazing about this is the contribution that you leave behind, church. Fathers, dads, the contribution you leave behind, it won't go unnoticed. It won't go unrewarded. The psalmist says that he will bless you. He will pour his blessings out upon your family. He will pour his blessings upon the nations. Amen. And he says I'll do it for generations to come. Church, that ought to make a Baptist smile this morning. Think about if I've got a godly home, if I'm raising my family the way God will make it be, and I'm sitting in the right Christian family, it's going to keep going. Amen. Amen. It's going to keep flowing. My little boy, he sees us living a godly home this morning. He sees us coming to church. Hey, he loves y'all youth group, by the way. He's that man long. He likes to boot us to death and wants to go to children's church this morning. Amen. He come here and have a good time. And that's what he needs to be doing, having a good time. But those are memories that will last a lifetime. The things I teach him, the things that he sees, the things that you guys teach him here at Westfield Baptist Church will last a lifetime. It'll be for generations to come. So Westfield Baptist Church, I want to challenge you this morning as we come to a close. I want you to think about something. The legacy that you leave behind, the legacy will last for years to come. And God will bless you for it. So the last, very last thing I want to tell you this morning, Westfield Baptist, if we're going to move forward, if we're going to be a productive church here in the community, if we're going to say, hey, we're going to have the most grandest church, we're going to be able to worship the Lord, we're going to invite families in here, we're going to do all these things, we 
We've got to get our homes in order first. Amen. Amen. It's time, dads, fathers, it's time for you. When you go out this morning, I challenge you, I urge you to go home and say, you know what, that message was for me. That psalmist wrote 128 just for my life because I want to go home and have the godly, divine design home that God wanted for me. And it all comes down to me spending that quality time with my family. Amen. Well, if we're going to move forward, we have to go home and fix our own homes first. Amen. That's the first thing we've got to do. So as we get ready for the invitation this morning, I challenge you. We'll come to a close. I challenge you. You read this psalm. It's Father's Day. God, if you're a father this morning, God bless you. Amen. He blessed you to be a father. He gave you riches above measure. So I challenge you this morning as we get ready to come to the sacred time, this sacred time of response to say, you know what? I've not been the dad that I should have been. I could have been a better father. I should spend more time with my wife. I should spend more time with my children. It can start right now, church. It can start right now.